And would you say that actually helps you learn more than what you would in class? Yeah, that might be controversial to say, but yes. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. I think a lot of the experience that I got from the club has been really useful. Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm in conversation with Sarah Gomez, a mechanical engineering student at SDSU. She's also the president of Mechatronics Club that participates in the International Robo Sub Competition. In this interview, we talk about her journey in the field of mechanical engineering, how she got some hands on experience through the Robo Sub Competition, and she also gives out some advice for incoming mechanical engineering students. I'll include all of the timings and relevant resources in the description below. So, without further ado, Let's get into it. Hey Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today and talking about your journey. Let's start with a quick introduction. Can you tell us about yourself? So I am uh, currently a part-time aerospace engineer at Parsons Corporation. Uh, my role is in space systems integration, which is working with hardware that interfaces with satellites for different missions. And I'm also completing my bachelor's in mechanical engineering at San Diego State University. I also lead a uh, under, underwater robotics team at San Diego State University uh, that participates in the international robot competition. Wow, that's pretty cool. Let's first start with mechanical engineering as SDSU. So how did you decide on taking up mechanical engineering? Yeah, but I started in middle school. Before that, I hadn't really considered engineering as a possible career. I was actually considering the arts or even being a teacher. And it wasn't until my mom noticed that I liked and was good at math that she actually suggested being uh, possibly an engineer. And at the time, I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> I didn't know any engineers or anything like that, but I was really curious. So I looked up the high school that I was going to attend and I found out that they had an engineering program. So I enrolled there and through that engineering program, the teacher at the time encouraged me to join the robotics team, which was a first robotics team. And through that experience, I, I loved it. I stayed throughout overall years of high school. And it's what really exposed me to different parts of engineering and what that really could mean. So from that experience, I, I really enjoyed the design and fabrication part of it. And so I wanted to get experience and wanted to major in mechanical engineering. And the other part of it was that I knew mechanical engineering was very broad and that it could be applicable to different fields. So I wanted to have the opportunity to choose because at the time I didn't really know what field I wanted to pursue. Interesting. Wow, that's so cool that, you know, first your mom inspired you, then your teacher inspired you, and you sort of got some hands-on experience with first robotics that led you to mechanical engineering. Yeah. <laughs> so now let's talk about the other big experience that you had at SDSU, the RoboSub competition. Now I'm pretty sure you get this question a lot, but could you tell us more about the RoboSub competition? Yes. Uh, the RoboSub competition is an international competition. So we got teams from Russia, Singapore, uh, Canada, China, and a lot of teams from the U.S., so even high school teams. What we do is there's an underwater obstacle course in this giant pool that's hosted by a naval base, and it's a 45 deep pool, so pretty deep. And in this obstacle course, there's a bunch of different tasks like going through a gate, uh, shooting torpedoes, manipulating objects, and even rising on a surface. So all of these are interesting challenges, and of course, being underwater makes that even more hard, but it's very rewarding. And going through that challenge, it's typically in the summer so teams are designing a vehicle for about a year before um, they compete in the summer wow that's really nice and as you said you get the whole year to prepare for it and then you compete it in the summer so now tell us a little bit more about what are some of the challenges in participating in an underwater competition or any robotics competition for the matter yeah so testing is a big one because not i don't know any team that has a 45 deep pool <laughs> <laughs> so typically uh you got to use a school pool and even through that can be challenging because at least at our school we have to compete for time with other sports and things like that 
or even just getting ready to have the vehicle done at that point can be very challenging because we're undergraduate students. So there's different time management that goes on, catching up students up to speed to how to design a vehicle that is underwater proof. It also takes time. So there's some trickle time that goes into kind of mentoring and training students and then give them a task so they can complete the design on time. It's definitely interesting because you don't learn underwater design or some of the things you do in classes. So a lot of it is coming from knowledge that has been passed down from the time in the club through or researching online and documenting that. Nice. And would you say that actually helps you learn more than what you would in class? Yeah, that might be controversial to say, but yes. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. I think a lot of the experience that I got from the club has been really useful. Uh, a lot of our alumni get picked up by employers really fast for either internships or for actual jobs just because of the skills that they learned through the club. Not just the technical ones, but also the what they call the soft skills, like communicating with a team, because all of that happens in the club. It's not just making sure the, the vehicle gets done, but it's communicating with your team to make sure that the requirements that you have for a specific discipline, say mechanical, doesn't interfere with what the electrical team needs to do or what the software team needs to do. So it's really kind of like a small business in the way that we operate, making sure that we're communicating with all the different departments to make sure that they that they can do their work while having this overall design vehicle done. Yeah, and that totally makes sense. And having worked in the industry for three years, communication skills sometimes can be really difficult to develop. Because as a student, even if you worked in group projects, generally you start working really close to the deadline. But this is something that you worked on for a whole year and you all have the same goal. And the whole competing environment also adds its own layer of experience. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the next question I wanted to ask you was, what are the tips or advice you would give to students who are looking to pursue mechanical engineering? Yeah. So when you sent me this question, I thought about it a lot because there is definitely a lot of things I want to say, but I think that the main things that I, I, I want to give advice on is, first of all, mechanical engineering is challenging. It's a challenging major, and I'm sure a lot of students already know. I knew, but even then, I, was, I didn't feel prepared for it. And so I would say don't give up because you might not get the grade that you want at first and even later on you can get an exam back and just be disappointed but it's not just going to happen to you it happens to everyone so know that you're not alone in the challenges that you're facing for an engineering major but you also got to realize that you that you need to get the help that you need early on to really help yourself so that means going to office hours, setting up study groups with friends or other classmates, or, or even going to tutoring services like universities often have. That's like the main thing. But I also want to emphasize getting involved is really, really important. And hopefully you realize from listening to my story that it has been really, really impactful for me to get involved is how I got a lot of the skills and it's what allowed me to open up a lot of doors. So getting involved, whether that's just, uh, whether it's a student organization or even societies, engineering societies, or even through research, those are all different doors that you can use and really utilize to bring out uh, more opportunities to you. Yeah, I would totally agree with you on that. Get your hands dirty, be it competition or research. And at the same time, all engineerings are difficult. I myself have faced that. It's not easy. Go to those office hours. It will definitely help you. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. I'm sure students will listen to your story and get inspired. 